Hi everyone, welcome back to my small video tutorial series. This time I'm gonna talk a bit about general texturing ideas and some hints for creating easy and good UVs. A lot of my texture material comes from a texture shoot I did on the real bird. That way I can ensure I use as much as photo material as possible. If you don't have the opportunity to do a texture shoot of the model you're building, just Google for aircraft walk around. There are plenty of websites that have 20 to 30 or sometimes even 50 photos of the same aircraft. The nice thing about that is that you have enough photo material of the same aircraft and therefore plenty of things you can extract to build your textures. That way it's very easy to keep consistency in colors, weathering and overall look. Those walk-around websites are also a great resource for modeling reference by the way. The photo material helped me a lot to cover those areas that are just that just can't be easily photographed like the top or bottom of the helicopter as well as many detailed areas so if you look at the bottom here all of this stuff here had to be painted from scratch a lot of areas of the wing where it's just too cluttered to get in and get everything photographed as well as the top area all of this stuff is extracted out of the photo material I, I got from the side. So one of the first things I do when it comes to painting all these textures is I make tileable textures like a base paint layer. This one is extracted out of the photo material so I can ensure the look consistency. And as you can see here, it's a little bit splotchy, just like the real bird has a little bit of weathering in there. So that way you just don't start with a solid color. You have already a base structure you can work on. Another thing that helps me a lot is creating images like this. This is also from the same aircraft, very useful details. Typical things are rusted screws with the contact dirt around it. That way you can ensure both items are connected. These dirt lines very useful you can stamp them basically everywhere where they make sense little rust areas the color tones very interesting not too saturated other kind of screws bolt lines rivets very useful are these kind of dirt lines you can do nice contact dirt when you have a little gizmo that sits on the surface of the aircraft and you you don't want to just use something like an ambient occlusion pass to make a contact dirt you want to use stuff like this it just looks way more natural and it helps breaking the too perfect overall dirt look you sometimes see when when an ambient occlusion pass gets used for that another thing that's important when it comes to texturing is making sure that nothing in your texture material is all the way on the left so too dark or all the way on the right side Otherwise, it will look burned out when you, when you have your lighting applied to it. So make sure you always stay in a range from about here to here or maybe a little bit narrower. Also, when it comes to taking texture photos or Googling for them, make sure you have overcast lighting in it. What you don't want to have is harsh sunlight that will is going to be a nightmare to paint out the shadows and neutralize the sunlight ambient light areas are always nice so when i pick color values for example i'm in photoshop let's say i just take a pixel radius of 5 to 10 to get a little bit of the average to to catch this camouflage paint and i save these values in the color palette that's this will always come in very handy later also um don't pick colors from a surface that is very reflective. There's a lot of different colors from the environment that gets added to the surface. There, sometimes it's just a little bit of guesswork to get the color values right. So once you gather plenty of photo reference, have a very close look at it. There's a lot you can observe and learn in terms of weathering, colors, wear and tear. Have a look at the camouflage pattern, for example. As you can see here, it's just it's not just a solid color. It looks like a guy took a spray can and did some vertical spraying here, some horizontal spraying there. Here is another, another row of spraying and where they overlap, it gets a little bit darker. Here's a little bit washed out. The, the 
corners are very sloppy so this way you can cover very large structures with a nice interesting pattern which would look very boring otherwise if it would be just a solid color areas like these are also very nice to isolate your own camouflage patch and use that on other areas where you don't have photos from that way the look consistency is always given also be careful with rust and contact dirt um, it's not just there is something like an ambient occlusion pass you can just use and apply dirt everywhere if you look at here there's barely any rust on the bird but it is where you have steel screws they tend to rust and then there are a few little stains going down, but, but that's about it. There's another little bit of stains here, but overall, the stuff is aluminum. The only kind of stains you'll find often is oil from hinges being washed out. So it's not, it's not brown, it's more like gray, black stuff. Same here where the door, door closes, nice dirt line, little bit of stains. Don't overdo this kind of stuff. Less is more. Same with rust here on the screws. Just a little bit of contact dirt on the rusty screw. That'll do the job. So also overall, don't try to be too perfect. Nothing is perfect in the real world. There's a lot of splotchiness, inconsistency in, in basically everything. For example, the, the bolt, the bolt lines, they're not super perfect straight by ruler you can see here the spacing is different they were shot in by a guy in the 70s and he just went in with his rivet gun or whatever they use and he was just putting all those rivets in there more or less accurate but it gives you a nice organic feel and it, every little bit helps to break up the this perfect cg look the same applies to the geometry we're all trying to model stuff like this very clean and in a perfect way, which is totally fine, it makes sense. But later you should add another pass where you break up very straight lines. I still have to do that. For example, if you take the wing, it's a perfect straight line, but the real bird has a lot of dents and it was assembled and disassembled a million times. It has seen combat. There's just a lot of dents I will, I will put in later the mechanics are very sloppy they just move stuff around get stented they don't care if you look at these armor plates here a lot of scratches from tools the pilot goes in very often and it's like paint gets screwed up in the door area also where people touch items a lot of times you have stuff like this happening so you can learn a lot from observing photo textures. I can really recommend doing that and and apply what you learn from those photo textures onto your painted textures. It will help a lot. So the last time I was talking about the advantages of splitting a big asset like this up into its single panels, that doesn't make it only easy to handle the modeling. It also helps you a lot with the UVs. So the real bird is made out of a lot of different aluminum panels and in the factory where they built this bird, they have to squeeze these panels into all these organic shapes and there's only so much they can do, otherwise the material stretches too thin or it just rips. We have the same problem, just the opposite of it. Um, when we have organic shapes like this tail fin as a whole and we try to unwrap that, there are a lot of areas where we would have a lot of tension and compressing. So you, when you have single panels like this one, for example, look how simple it is built. It's just basically a rectangle with a little bit of curvature some edge loops to stop the smoothing and a little bit of depth which I simply created with a shell modifier and I deleted the inside because we don't need that. So let's say we have a panel like this and we want to unwrap it and we don't have 
any good UVs on it. So it would basically look like something like this. Um, so this is just a planar mapping I put from whatever angle onto it to destroy my good UVs. So if you have something like this, um, you can simply select the whole element, use the quick peel, which relaxes the whole surface and flattens it. And then because of the thickness at the corners, we will get some tension. So you simply go in here, select all these four corners, number three down here, and this one, you split them. And you select the, select the whole element and here you go to relax we want to use the polygon angles with an amount of one and voila it's relaxed all the tension here is released and we have a perfect unwrapped panel and this is absolutely the method i used on the entire bird it's all aluminum panels all modeled the same way and therefore creating UVs for the most part it was very easy it was just a game of patience and that way I was able to avoid a lot of tension areas where I would get stretching same with compression it all can be for the most part it can all be avoided if you have panels like this and that's the way how the whole bird was modeled. So thanks for watching again and see you next time.